it's incredibly exciting to witness SpaceX once again extending a helping hand by providing launch services for its competitors. Just recently, SpaceX completed its second mission bound for the International Space Station this month. However, unlike previous missions targeting the orbiting outpost, this flight didn't involve a Dragon spacecraft. In a remarkable collaboration, SpaceX launched a Cygnus spacecraft on behalf of Northrop Grumman as part of NG's 20th Commercial Resupply Services contract mission for NASA, utilizing its Falcon 9 rocket. The awe-inspiring launch took place from Space Launch Complex 40, or SLC-40 for short, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, against the stunning backdrop of a clear blue sky. Notably, the Falcon 9 first stage booster supporting this mission, bearing the tail number B-1077, completed its 10th flight. It had previously carried out missions, such as launching the Dragon Endurance for the Crew-5 flight, the SpaceX CRS-28 mission, as well as four Starlink flights. Approximately eight minutes after after liftoff, B-1077 gracefully touched down at Landing Zone 1 at CCSFS. Observers along Florida's Space Coast or in other parts of Central Florida may have been treated to the distinct sound of a sonic boom as the booster re-entered the atmosphere during its landing. This momentous occasion marks the 35th booster landing at LZ-1, the 44th land landing for SpaceX in Florida, and the 269th Falcon 9 booster landing to date. Additionally, this successful launch and landing marks SpaceX's impressive 10th such achievement of the year. Congrats to the SpaceX team for the first time completing 10 rocket launches and landings in a single month. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a tweet. Gwen Shotwell also expressed, Congrats to the Northrop Grumman and SpaceX teams on today's successful launch of Cygnus NG-20 to the space station. This is Falcon 9's second launch to the orbiting laboratory in under two weeks and 10th launch so far this year. More significantly, the launch of the NG-20 mission marked several milestones for all parties involved. As mentioned earlier, this was the inaugural occasion on which a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket propelled a Cygnus spacecraft for Northrop Grumman. During a pre-launch briefing with reporters, Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, commented on the first of three planned missions for NG, expressing, It's a tremendous honor to be part of this team. It's a remarkable effort to witness how all the spaceflight participants come together. Given the need for a Cygnus spacecraft to be accessible for last-minute cargo loading, Gersten Meyer highlighted modifications made by SpaceX to the Falcon 9's payload fairings to facilitate this requirement. These modifications included a 5 foot by 4 wide door, which he emphasized was more than just a hatch. It's actually an environmentally controlled area, so we don't introduce any type of debris or contamination, he clarified. The front part of Cygnus is highly sensitive as it docks with the station. They there are sealing rings that attach it to the space station. We cannot risk contaminating those rings. Therefore, we must ensure the cargo is safely delivered through this door into the fairing and then meticulously placed inside Cygnus for launch. He specified that the door is situated near the bottom of the payload fairings and described the process of accessing it, mentioning a truck that backed up to the fairings with a platform attached to enable workers to ascend through the door. We at SpaceX thrive on innovation and creativity Creativity. So, present us with a challenge like cutting a 5 foot by 4 hole in the fairing and we will find a solution, Gerstenmeier asserted. The fairing remains recoverable, just as it was before. Cyrus Dalla, the vice president and general manager of tactical space systems at NG, noted that no modifications were necessary for the Cygnus spacecraft ahead of this mission. They did, however, adapt their loading procedures to accommodate their new means of transport to space. If all proceeds as planned, Cygnus is scheduled to arrive at the orbiting laboratory at 4.20 a.m. Eastern, or 0920 GMT, on Thursday. It will remain docked to the ISS for approximately six months before descending back into Earth's atmosphere for fiery destruction. Cygnus is one of three robotic cargo craft currently servicing the ISS, alongside SpaceX's Dragon capsule and Russia's Progress vehicle. While Progress and Cygnus are expendable spacecraft, Dragon is reusable, surviving re-entry through Earth's atmosphere and gently splashing down under parachutes in the ocean. Cygnus relies on the Falcon 9 to ferry it to the International Space Station due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. 
The confluence of the conflict and the gradual phasing out of Russian-made engines compelled the retirement of the Antares 230 Plus rocket. Northrop Grumman is diligently working on its next-generation launch vehicle, the Antares 330, in collaboration with Firefly Aerospace. However, this innovative solution won't be ready until at least 2025. Remarkably, this mission also marked the first launch of a Cygnus spacecraft from the Cape since 2017. The CRS Flight 7 was the culmination of three such missions that relied on the launch services of United Launch Alliance's Atlas V. NASA's Jeff Arend, manager of the Systems Engineering and Integration Office for the ISS program, lauded the seamless arrangement to launch Cygnus for the first time on a Falcon 9. He emphasized, given the overall importance of cargo and science to our mission, the significance of this mission cannot be overstated. Initially, SpaceX and Orbital ATK were awarded NASA's commercial resupply services contracts. With SpaceX continuing to conduct resupply missions to the ISS using its Cargo Dragon spacecraft, each company is contracted to send cargo to the ISS twice a year. Notably, Northrop Grumman acquired Orbital ATK in 2018. The supply of Antares rockets faced a dual challenge. Federal law mandated the use of American American-made engines for certain missions, necessitating a shift away from Russian-made RD-181 engines. Additionally, a significant portion of the Antares is manufactured by a Ukrainian company, and supply chain disruptions stemming from Russia's invasion of Ukraine prompted NG to announce a partnership with Firefly Aerospace in 2022 to develop a new iteration of the Antares rocket. However, this solution won't be available until, like I said before, at least 2025. SpaceX stepped in admirably to bridge the gap in launch capabilities. SpaceX has demonstrated its ability to step in and successfully complete missions when other companies face challenges, even if they are SpaceX's competitors. The invasion of Ukraine disrupted plans for internet satellite company OneWeb to launch from Russia, prompting a shift to SpaceX and India's space agency to conduct the remaining six launches needed to complete its constellation, similar to SpaceX's Starlink service. In another instance of collaboration, SpaceX agreed to assist Amazon, led by Elon Musk's frenemy, Jeff Bezos, in deploying its own extensive internet satellite constellation, Project Kuiper. We treat everyone fairly, Musk remarked with a hint of amusement during a January meeting with SpaceX employees. SpaceX has also benefited from delays experienced by other companies, such as assuming responsibilities for crewed missions to the ISS under NASA's commercial crew program. Boeing's CST-100 Starliner has faced significant delays, allowing SpaceX's Crew Dragon to take the lead with seven rotational missions completed since 2020, while Boeing aims for its first crewed test flight scheduled for April of this year. In 2023, SpaceX achieved an impressive 96 launches of its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. With Falcon, we have achieved the most launches of any rocket in a single year ever, Musk proudly stated. We're aiming for maybe as much as 150 flights this year. Well folks, that's about it. As we wrap up our exploration of SpaceX's recent achievements, it's thrilling to witness their collaborative spirit in action notably in providing launch services for competitors. The successful launch of NG's Cygnus spacecraft propelled by SpaceX's Falcon 9 marks a significant milestone in this endeavor. Noteworthy is the Falcon 9 booster's remarkable 10th flight, underlining SpaceX's commitment to reusability and cost efficiency. Amidst the anticipation of Cygnus's arrival at the ISS, questions arise about the future of space collaboration and the role of innovative solutions in overcoming challenges. How will this partnership shape the landscape of space exploration, and what opportunities might it unlock for future missions? Join us in contemplating these questions and celebrating the spirit of cooperation driving humanity's journey beyond Earth's bounds. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.